Senna, this is not what we're supposed to be doing. No, no right on the wall. Oh, no. No wall, Zena. Come on, let's go. What up y'all and welcome back to my channel. We are going to be getting into this magnetic chalkboard that I made with a paint roll attachment. Recently, I revamped the kids' area and realized that they needed somewhere to do some coloring, painting, and writing. So I was in between ordering an erase board versus a chalkboard, but then realized my little daughter, she likes to write on everything. It don't matter what it is, pens, markers, crayons, she's writing on the walls. So the erase board was out of the picture because I don't want to have to deal with markers. She'll even be marking on her own body. Chalkboards was the next thing to go to, and I wanted to make sure that it was magnetic. My son uses his magnetic blocks a lot, and we did order some magnetic letters for him to use. So fooling around with Pinterest, it'll make you feel like you can do anything. So between Pinterest and YouTube, I just made sure I did a lot of research on what items I would be needing and instructions on how to complete these boards. And I was so happy how everything turned out. I'm so glad I just stuck it in there because there were many times where I was just like, girl, just buy the doggone thing. <laughs> this project should only take you three days, but it took me a whole entire week because of one little small mistake that I made. So stay tuned so you can see what not to do versus what to do if you want to make these magnetic chalkboards. Oh my gosh. Ah. Listen, I'm about to give up. I'm trying to find what I need, but. Okay, don't give up, Tamara. I know this is intimidating and you want to get this project done. Don't give up. Do not give up. Uh, all right, let's just find somewhere else. So the important part of this chalkboard being magnetic is you need to have the right type of sheet metal. Do not pick up aluminum, which I picked up first thinking that it was what I needed and it was not going to work. I'm glad I found out ahead of time and then had to go to another store to find the correct kind, which is galvanized sheet metal. I don't know, I just feel like I feel so much satisfied if I just made it myself and be like, wow, I did that. So I'm gonna push through. Gonna push through. Another store run later finally found the sheet metal that I need, which is galvanized. It is better with magnetic forces and also decreases rust over time. Did you know that chalkboard paint can come in different colors or you can tint it to the color that you want? I'm going with traditional black, so just be careful which one you pick up. I was not looking forward to making any frames for these boards, so I just picked up a frame from Ikea, but I just was gonna have to do one extra step because the galvanized sheet metal is a little bit longer than the frame itself. So here I'm marking off maybe just maybe a quarter of an inch that I need to cut off so that it can fit into the frame. In order to do that, I picked up these 10 snips, which is going to help me to cut down the galvanized sheet metal, but you gotta be very careful because this sheet metal is very sharp. So take your time while doing so. Here I'm just cleaning down the sheet metal with some alcohol just to make sure that the paint can stick to it better. Okay, pause. Don't even look at this primer or even pick it up. The only reason why I was using it is because one of the YouTube videos that I watched, she used it before using a chalkboard paint over it. Down the line, I didn't realize I was getting so much cracking and I couldn't understand why. Read the instructions on the back and clearly says, do not use on galvanized sheet metal. Look at me, just wasting my time painting this thing and not knowing that it's gonna set me back from three days to a whole week. Just look at me, just going and going. See all this cracking that's going on? It didn't matter how many coats I put on this thing, it just continued to crack. I was just so frustrated and I had to start all over, but thank God there was another side to this thing for me to use. This time I went in with a 220 grit sandpaper and then sand down the sheet metal. Not sure if that would have made a difference for the primer, but the primer did say not to use on galvanized sheet metal. So I'm not saying not to use a primer. Maybe you just need to find the one that's right for galvanized sheet metal. Anywho, 
also went in and just soaked this thing down to make sure there's no sticky residue once again and then went over with some alcohol again to just make sure it was super dry and nothing sticky oily on it and then now going in with the chalkboard paint so no primer just straight chalkboard paint all right so the plan is to paint let that dry for an hour then sand it down then go in with another coat let that dry for another hour then sand that down and then the third coat you're just gonna leave on without sanding on top of that jesus christ i have to start all over yeah. oh my gosh but this is so much better oh my gosh <laughs> So here's a, just a recap. What you saw before was just the very first layer that was dried and now I'm just sanding it down right now. And then as for sanding it down, I just kind of wipe off any dust or anything and then go back in and paint all over that again. Remember to start the process. You're gonna paint, sand, paint, sand, and then the last paint you just leave on. And from there, it needs to sit for three whole days. Listen, my baby likes to be involved in anything, and if I can get him involved, I will let him be involved. Oh, look at that. So much better. The only thing I really noticed is that it's um, not as smooth as the other side was with the primer being on. Um, so that's just something I have to deal with. We see all that cracking that was going on. That was just bothering me way too much. But now I just redid everything. And this is what we got. Looks so much better. You see, I am back in Home Depot. <laughs> now, um, trying to get these done. For the paper roll attachment, I knew I would need a dowel, but didn't know what size I would need. So I was glad that I brought them with me and I ended up just picking up a three fourths of an inch dowel. And to attach everything, I picked up a Gavinau's pipe strap in a one and a half inch. These do not come with screws, so make sure you pick up the right screws for them as well. Now guess what? Your girl has to do some cutting, and I mean cutting with a saw. So Home Depot do have these areas where you can either have the employees or workers help cut stuff for you. But when it comes to these minor things like a dowel, um, they do not do that, honey. So you got to go in and do that yourself. And yeah, it was a little intimidating, but I got it done. All right, so now it is time to season your board. Before you even use it, you have to do this step. Just basically put chalk all over the board from head to toe and let it sit for like an hour or two. I let it sit for a whole day and then just go in with a damp cloth and wipe everything off. All right, so I wanted white frames for my board. Ikea did not have white frames when I tried to return my black ones. They only had the silver ones left, so ended up just picking those up and now I'm just spray painting them white. To secure the frame to the wall, I went in with some double-sided mounting tape along the edges. And for the frame itself, I was using a picture frame hook that came in a kit that is full to hang up to 30 pounds. Here are the boards nice and clean. All I did was took a damp cloth to wipe all of the excess chalk off. Mm. Do 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 do
At this point, the chalkboard was already up and in use. I just never got a chance to put everything together for the paper rolls. So now I'm just securing everything and it's just a simple step of just putting the dowel right in between everything. One, two, three. Y'all, look at these boards. I, I just can't believe I actually did them. Like, look at them. Seriously, they are so nice. I'm so glad I stuck it through. So, so glad. Here are most of the items that we'll be using for this board. These magnetic letters and numbers come in this case, which is all sorted out and organized. I love that about that. These chalk pen holders are going to be a lifesaver because kids drop the chalks all the time and you don't have to worry about that with them breaking. I love that they push up and you can also retract them back. These paints are all washable. Lord knows we're gonna need that with these kids and I love that they're able to be wiped down if they get onto their boards or I can just wash their clothes if it gets all over their clothes. The versatility of these boards are everything with this paper roll attachment. I can literally go from using chalk to magnetic letters and numbers, painting, and even using markers and crayons on these paper rolls. I just love the versatility of these boards. has inspired you guys to do your own magnetic chalkboard or even use chalkboard paint on the walls and frame some kind of way. Pinterest and YouTube, honey, is your best friend. So thank you guys for watching and see you on my next video. Bye.